Here we have how many even six digit numbers are there? That's easy, unless I say without repetition. If I say without repetition, how many cases do we need to make? Two. One that ends in a zero, and then one that ends in two, four, six, or eight, because it changes exactly what for how many options you have for the first number, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Plus one, two, three, four, five, six. Here I would have zero. Here I would have two, four, six, or eight. And then I have to box and hold. So one, box and hold. Um, then here I would have one to nine, which is nine options. Hold the nine. Then one to eight, which is eight options. Hold the eight. Seven, six, five, etc. So this one ends up with nine options in the front if I pick a zero. This one, if I pick an eight or a two or a four or a six, I'm going to get 1 to 7 and 9, which is actually 8 options. Hold the 9. What comes back in the next one that I told you the error is going to happen is? 0. 0. So we have to do 0 to 7, which is actually 8 options. Hold the 7. Then I would have 7, 6, 5. This one is 4. I forgot to put the So please make sure to remember to bring that 0 back if you're someone who forgot the 0. If you're someone who forgot two cases or completely how to do it, star, star, star. Because these can appear, right? We have to go back through and remember how to do our perms and comms too. They're on the test on Tuesday. When you type this in, what do you get? 68,880. The next one we get a word. A word has is like Scrabble tiles. You can only repeat if you have more than one letter, right? And when we get a word, the very first thing we always do is rewrite it with stacked letters so we don't forget to divide. O T O R I A. So every single question I'm going to do for this is going to have three factorial, two factorial, zero factorial, or oh my goodness, three factorial, two factorial, two factorial for the repetition in the denominator, right? If you have a TI 83, you just remember to put that denominator in brackets or you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay? So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten letters. On the bottom, I'm going to have 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. It has to begin with a vowel. How many vowels are there? 5. Because remember, we treat the top like we can tell the difference between all of them, right? And then it ends in a consonant. How many consonants are there? 5. How many letters have I used up? 2. Each blank holds a letter, correct? So how many letters do I have left? 8. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And what do I end up with? What's your answer? Sorry? 42,000. Okay. Then the C's are all together. There are three C's. Does it say together at the front? No. Watch yourself, because if on the test it says together at the front, a lot of you will still multiply by moving them, and you wouldn't multiply by the number by moving them, because you wouldn't move them. It would be at the front. So that's where the error lies. All right. So we have three C's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have to hold the three C's together. I have three, then two, then one, because I treat them like they're different. How many letters are left? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If it said together at the front, I'd be done. If it said together at the back, I'd be done. If it said together in the middle, I'd be done. Right? But if it just says together, I have to move it how many ways? Eight. So it's one more than the hooked together number. And what do we get for an answer? Now this one says the O's can't be together. Another way this could be asked is I have five people going to a movie, two people get in a fight. If they don't want to sit together, how many ways can that happen? It's the same thing, right? Total minus them sitting together. What's left over is them not sitting together. So O's can't be together. So the total would be 10 factorial over that, and I don't know why I drew that so aggressively. Then minus. Two factorial, two factorial, two factorial. 
Um, there are two O's, so I hooked them together. Two, then one, use up two letters, so eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, times nine. And what do I get? So, Sixty. Yeah. Number three is where things go awry. So, I it's way easier if I just give you the original as f of x, and then I tell you to transform it. Most people can do okay. If I give you the original as something transformed, and you have to transform something that's transformed, that's when life goes a little bit more downhill. So. Here, I'm going to get this into y equals first. So I have f 2x plus 3. Okay? Now, mapping can be turned into words. Remember, if we draw this, mapping can be turned into words and use the exact letters or numbers you have, right? So if this one is plus 2, that means I'm horizontally translating it 2 to the what? Which way? Right. Because we're going from mapping to... Words. Mapping to words is in the heart. It's plus two. I go two to the right. Correct? Honestly, this is this will help you because people will get stuck. Remember, if you're sitting in this heart, the numbers stay the same. You do as you say. Right? Plus two is two to the right. How do I make plus two here? Well, I just leave the two outside and go right to having a one x. How do I make plus two? How do I make it go two to the right in this bracket? You minus two. Yeah, you could go one more step and distribute it through and say 2x minus 4. That would also work. 2x minus 2 does not work. Because if you put a 2 in front, then it would be x minus 1. You'd be going 1 to the right. Yeah? Um, the two two, um, it's a different answer. Yeah. What is it? So it was all the same. Oh, 960. Yeah, that's kind of bad. So sorry, what? It's 960. <laughs> Yeah, but two, zero, nine, nine, six, zero. Is he writing a little messy? Line nine. Uh -huh. Okay. Worst things in life. That's okay. Now, if I look at the mapping, what is my vertical stretch by a factor of what? We're going from words to mapping stays the same. So this is a vertical stretch by a factor, and also, why is never changed? Vertical stretch by a factor of what? Two. Two. The stretch affects all the y's. So I have a plus 3 at the back here. That's my equation, correct? Do I not? Well, I make sure I bracket the whole equation. What's in front of this F? Wood. A 1. Also known as a 1. Yes. <laughs> that was a good yawn answer. Worked out. So it's a 1. There's a 1 here. Then I'm going to stretch it by 2. So the 2 goes into the 1. Some people want to put it in here. Can a vertical stretch get plopped in with a horizontal stretch? No. No. So it goes here, and it goes here, and then I have to go one down, so I just subtract that at the back, because you have to stretch the vertical translation first, then move it one down. A lot of people will put the stretch here, but won't stretch the three. I need to stretch the three. It stretches all the y's. So I'm going to get 2, f, 2 bracket x minus 2 plus 6, minus 1. And then I can put them together. Because I have to stretch and reflect before I'm allowed to translate, right? SRT. We agreed with start transformations that way, so it's plus 5. Just so you know, I'll give you another one of these on Friday, and then I'll give you another one of these on Monday. Hopefully by then you quit not being racist. Okay, so we're going to flip back to the notes where we left off yesterday. We got up to factoring degree 3. We're going to do 4 and 5 today, which is not any harder, to be totally honest, at all. So we're going back to where you were writing your notes. So we're carrying on from yesterday. 
I don't remember which this is, four or five. I'm going to call it four. Okay, so I'm going to factor x to the four minus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x plus 18. Now, I talked about this to you guys before, and if you think something is easy because you're memorizing steps, think, okay, rather than just memorizing steps, I need to kind of understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. So you always have to understand, because they do a little tweak or something, then you don't, you'll be lost, right? So we always go for understanding. Now, yesterday I was telling you guys to circle this 18, and you were saying the possible factors, and I'm going to explain that a little better today, but I didn't want to overwhelm you yesterday with just learning synthetic division to begin with. But the possible factors always come from the factors of 18, the constant, the number at the back, okay? So it would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 18, plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 9, plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 6, because factors of 18 are what numbers? That two numbers that multiply to give you that number, right? That's what factors are. So we're taking all the numbers, so 1, 18, 2, 9, 3, 6, and I have all those. Now, if I didn't have my calculator to find an x-intercept, a possible x-intercept are those numbers. So I would have to go put in 1, do synthetic division, see if I get a 0 as my remainder. Because if it's an x-intercept, I get a 0 as my remainder, because that remainder is just the y value, right? That remainder is just the y value when you've input. It is. So you're putting in an x, you're getting out a y. Well, if you're putting in an x-intercept, you should be getting out a y of 0, which the remainder is 0, right? Okay, so we'd have to guess and check, guess and check, guess and check, guess and check until we went along. Now, how could they ask this in a multiple choice? They could say, what are the possible factors of this? And A could be x plus 7, and B could be x minus 4, and C could be x plus 6, and D could be x minus 5. And you'll type them all in, and you'll say to me, but this is up, none of them are factors. When I plug them all in, the remainder is 0. But the question I asked is, which of the following are possible factors? Not which of the following are factors, right? Which of these are not possible? This one is not possible. This one is not possible. This one's not possible because they're not actually factors of 18. So they can test to see if you know what are the possible ones. Do you know how you said, well, I can just type it in my calculator and get one? Yeah, sure, you can. But they can also test if you know how to do it without your calculator or ask for the possible factors and it actually not being one of the factors. It doesn't work. It's just possible. Okay? So that's the way they can ask it. Now, just like yesterday, we needed an x-intercept. How did we make sure we got an x-intercept? We typed it into y equals. We looked at our table for where y equals what? Y equals what? Zero, because we're looking for your x-intercepts. And then we pulled the lowest one. Do we have to pull the lowest one? No. Type it into your calculator, and I'm going to prove it. So go second table and find your x-intercept. Second table, you don't want to use trace. Trace is not actually what you're doing. There's two more. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Two more. So you can make the table start and then you make it into like an eight-word thing. Start there. I don't know why it was, it was stuck there. So um, we have negative two, we have negative one, and we have three. We agree? Okay, I'm going to be a rebel and use negative one to just prove a point. So my factor is x plus 1. 
Now, I said to use the lowest one just so that we're all doing the same algebra, right? That's the only reason why. But I can pick any of them, and it will still work. I'm just going to get my factors in a different order. So, what was my first step I told you for synthetic division? Make sure you can what? Rocket count. So, count your exponents down to zero, right? So, I have 4, 3, 2, 1, and then technically x to the zero. We discussed that. So I put my coefficients in because I can rocket count. So I get 1, negative 3, negative 7, 15, 18. This is just a faster way to do this um, without having to do long division. So that's why we learned synthetic division. I don't know why I wrote those so small, but then they such a large synthetic division. Thing. So we do the same steps over and over. We drop the 1. Multiply outside, add inside. Multiply outside, add inside. Multiply outside, add inside until I get 0, right? So I multiply the outside ones. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add the inside. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Multiply the outside. Negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. Add the inside. Negative 3 plus 4, or sorry, negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3. Add the inside. 15 plus 3, 18. Oops, I switched colors. And then negative 1 times 18, negative 18. And then you should be happy because what are we going to get? Zero. Zero. So down here, I can put this polynomial if I want. I can say x4 minus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x plus 18 equals. Now, one of them is x plus 1. If I took an x out, what are these ones going to be now? Because it's going to be x squared still? x to the 3, because it's x to the 4, so it drops at 1 by taking out. You're dividing out an x, right? When you divide out an x or GCF out an x, it becomes x cubed, right? You're just taking 1x out. So now this is 1x cubed minus 4x squared minus 3x plus 18. And we did x cubed yesterday. What did we have to do when we had an x cubed? Type it into your y equals. Look for an x-intercept, right? Like it's nothing crazy. So type that one into your y equals. Did everyone get one? What did you get for your x-intercept? First person who says it, say it gets medium. Negative 2, 3. x equals? Negative 2. Negative 2. Negative two. So I'm going to go x plus 2. Is my factor? What do I get? Not you get me to use your number when I do something. Oh. <laughs> Not that great. That's something special. Thoroughly disappointing. Um, and then you get 1, negative 4, negative 3, 18. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Add it is negative 6. Multiply is 12. Add it is 9. Multiply is negative 18. Add it is 0. So I get 1x squared minus 6x plus 9. It's just choosing to do what it wants. Now, what can I do with that? Factor. Grade 11, after grade 10. What times what equals 9? 
what plus what equals negative 6. And remember I told you you're going to learn that when the polynomial has a leading coefficient of 1, you're going to be excited because it's going to lead down to a nice factor. Negative 3 and negative 3. So it'll be negative 3 and negative 3. I always draw the blank because then I can double check. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So that makes me feel better. Because there's a plus 1 in front, I can go right to bracket. Instead of writing it out twice, how could I write it down here? Squared. Now, it should make sense. I have an x times an x times an x times an x. Technically, because I have two of them, right? An x times an x times an x and an x is an x4. So at least you have enough uh, factors, enough brackets that if you foiled it, you'd get an x4 back. Can we check it out? How do we check it? Type this into your y1, type your factors into your y2, and make that a thicker line. So your y1 is x4 minus 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 15x plus 18. And your y2 is that factored form with a thicker line unless you have colored colors. You guys are trying this one, factor. 2x4 plus 3x cubed minus 17x squared minus 27x minus 9. What do you suppose is going to happen here? Instead of having the 1 at the end, you're going to have the 2. And instead of having that 1 leading coefficient, when you get to a squared, you're going to have a 2, so you have to do decomp. Try it out. Okay, so I'm going to start doing it if you are still working on it, that's okay. So rocket count, 43210. Often, remember I told you that if you go to put in the x-intercept and it doesn't work, but the x-intercept is blatantly that, you either type things you calculated wrong or you didn't rocket count and put the placeholder of the zero and then you won't get to zero, right? So if I'm missing an x squared, I have to put a zero in its place. So make sure you count, 43210, this one worked. So I have 2, 3, negative 17. If you use a different number, don't go feverishly erasing. At the end, we just might have them out of a different order. It's not a big deal. Negative 6, negative 3, 3 times negative 3 is 9, negative 8, 24, negative 3 is 9, is 0. synthetic division, so I get 2, negative 3, negative 8, negative 3. You do 5, you just have to do an extra synthetic division to get you down to x squared. So this is negative 2, negative 5, 5, negative 3, 3, 0. So I get 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. And I say what times what equals negative 6. The outside number is what plus what equals negative 5. If you're someone who still can't factor, get out of denial. It's not a good place to be. Just walk up and say, Mrs. Lepp, can't factor. Or you just say, no factor. Or you can just say, factor, and do this. Like, you don't even have to speak. You just like, it's not like factoring, you like, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I won't judge you. I'll judge you if you don't figure out how to factor. Okay? Negative 6 and 1. We double check it. Some people tell me it's negative 2 and negative 3. Remember, we checked that. If I do negative 2 times negative 3, I get positive 6, so that's why that one doesn't work. Negative 6 and 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus uh, negative 1 oops, plus positive 1 is negative 5. So I'm going to replace this with negative 6x plus 1x. So the first term stays the same. Minus 6x plus 1x replaces that 5x, and the back term stays the same. And then I group. 2x, x minus 3. Plus 1, x minus 3. And so I get 2x plus 1, and x minus 3. So what you can say is the factored form, if you choose not to write it as we were going along like I always do, the factored form is x plus 3, x plus 1, 2x plus 1, 
x minus 3. If it's a written response, I will always let them know that I know exactly what they wanted me to find. Okay? Yeah? Where did the x plus 1 come from? x equals negative 1. I typed the 2x cubed into my calculator. You have typed oh, this one in. The other one yeah. Okay. 